Hi, David. Hi, how are you? Doing well, thanks, how are you? Oh, doing well. Awesome. <laughs> well, thanks for meeting us here. For those that aren't familiar with our beautiful background, can you explain where we are and, and the, what your guys' role is here? Sure, you bet. Uh, this is uh, the OSU Botanic Garden, and it's actually part of our research facilities as well. So we have about 100 acres total. Wow. Um, where we have a lot of research going on and trials going on with uh, turf. Uh, that's, we have a big turf program here. Um, as well as nursery production and a lot of other things. This site right here is uh, our studio gardens for okay. Oklahoma Gardening. And we have about four <laughs> acres of manicured gardens that we use for taping and filming the show there. All right, so you guys are definitely focused on plants and from the wildlife department angle, we're really thinking about the wildlife aspect and we're so excited that there's so many places and, and things that homeowners can do to you know make their, their property a little more wildlife friendly. So we were hoping we could kind of meet here and, and talk about some of the different plants that landowners may end up putting in their in their wildflower garden. Sure, yeah, you bet. We have a lot of plants out here and obviously they're not all native plants, um, but we still have a lot of great plants that we can use. And uh, we have a nice little native plant garden right here. Perfect. Um, we have other native plants spread throughout the garden, but this one's kind of focuses on a lot of the natives that grow here. And you can see there's some that are blooming right now. So, you know, this is late in the year, right. great fall, you know, fall plants and plants that provide pollination. And there's a ton of pollinators Yeah, pollen right and here. nectar for, yeah. uh, for a lot of our pollinating uh, insects. Um, and so this is a neat plant. I really like this one. It's, this is one of the sylphiums. Okay. Um, it goes by compass plant, cup plant, actually rosin plant as well. <laughs> um, but I like it because I do like the, the fact that this one has the, the leaves are attached right at the stem. There's no okay. petiole uh, providing a little cup. Okay. So when it rains or if you're irrigating, um, it'll catch water there and that provides a source of water for our insects and birds and things like that. Great. But the, the insects love this plant. It yeah. grows six, seven, eight feet tall uh, under ideal yeah. conditions. Yeah. So and it'd be a lot of good screening cover too. Good screening <laughs> cover, yep. And it's a perennial, so it's going to come back every okay. year um, right. with no problems at all. Uh, this is another plant that's very common throughout Oklahoma. This is called Snow on the Mountain. Okay. And it is uh, an annual, actually, and will come back from seed very, very easily. And it's very colorful this time of year. It's one of the euphorbias. Okay. Great. Also very tough plant will grow in just about any type of soil and growing conditions. Great. So one thing that I'm hearing from you on both of these plants it seems to be that they're they're pretty low maintenance. So somebody that doesn't really have a green thumb, they might be able to grow these in their own backyard. They sh yeah, they should be able to. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, a lot of our natives, again, are adapted to our, our climate and our growing conditions. So they do pretty well. Now, remember too that natives, um, not all of them are quite as attractive sure, <laughs> as sure. these plants are. Um, not as showy. <laughs> not as showy, and some people would even consider some of our native plants as weeds, you know. Very so, true. but uh, they do provide, um, a, they are a good resource for uh, our wildlife. Great. Well, these are two great plants. Can you show us a few others that might we might be able to put into a, sure. right in a wildflower yep, garden? Let's go take a look at some more. Awesome. Thank you. This is another garden that I wanted to show you. This is our sun perennial garden, and wow. we have several species in here that, uh, again, are excellent uh, perennials for fall okay. um, and for the pollinators. This is one of our natives called uh, ironweed, oh. and there's actually several species within Veron Vernonia, which is the genus. Okay, look at that color, it's beautiful. Yeah, aren't they gorgeous? Yeah. I just love them. They, uh, they grow all over the state and actually eastward. Okay. Um, and uh, they're very tough. You find them growing, again, you know, growing along the roadsides, and, and uh, they provide this excellent color late in the okay. season. So I feel like I may have seen ironweed growing in the roadsides, but it wasn't quite this tall. Is, is this a different species? There are different species, and some do grow much taller than others. But, you know, we also water a lot in this garden. So, <laughs> you know, the ones you see growing along the roadside, they're, they're, uh, they're not getting cared for quite as sure. much. So sometimes in sense. the garden, they'll grow a little bit taller than they would out in the wild. Okay. Perfect. Um, and then another one that's very popular, a lot of people are familiar with this one. This is the uh, goldenrod, um, wow. the solidago species. Okay. And, you know, it has these bright yellow uh, flowers, um, but it also gets a bad rap because it blooms the same time ragweed blooms. Oh. And ragweed is actually what causes a lot of the hay fever, the allergies so this time of, of year. A lot of people may be blaming this. They might be blaming this, yep. It actually has a heavier pollen than the ragweed does, so it's not going to be flying around in the air. So it's the one that gets the bad rap, but it's an excellent uh, native species, has beautiful yellow flowers yeah. in, the, in the fall. And then uh, this group right here, we have to actually have several plants. These are all the milkweed plants. Okay. Um, some Asclepias, uh, which 
you know, is makes up a lot of the common milkweeds that we have um, found growing all over the place. And these are obviously very important to our monarch butterflies. Um, sure. They all bloom at different times. Some bloom earlier, some bloom in really dry sites, some like, you know, more prefer more moist sites. Um, but we have several different species that grow. Actually, I think there's almost two dozen species wow. of uh, Asclepius that grow throughout the state and are, are very important, especially to the monarch butterfly, so, but other, other, other butterflies sure. as well. So not only do they provide pollen for, for pollinators, but they also serve as a host plant, correct? Exactly. Oh. So they're, uh, they provide uh, the nectar and the pollen for the butterflies, um, but they also act as a host plant for the larva, which is very important, especially okay. to our uh, monarch butterflies. Sure, sure. Do you, do you know any other host plants that the larva might uh, be able to feed on? Yeah, so the passion flower, passion vine, is an excellent um, host for the fritillary butterflies. Um, dill is great for the swallowtails, okay. and there's a number of others. Perfect, thanks. Do you have any other plants that you'd like to show us? Sure, yeah, let's go take a look at a few more. All right. Let's walk up here. There's another species, uh, very popular, very common, are the helianthus species. Okay, so, so the sunflowers, sunflowers yeah. Right. And uh, they're obviously very popular plants. There's annual as well as perennial forms of helianthus. Okay. And they provide, of course, great pollen sources for a lot of our uh, pollinators. But also, you know, it, it, after they start going to seed, they provide, they're a great resource for our birds as, Absolutely, as well. Absolutely, yeah. So, really popular for birds. Yeah. And then one, one more down here I wanted to show you. This is another Vernonia, or ironweed, that's native to eastern Oklahoma. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, this one's called Vernonia lettermanii. Okay. The leaves are more needle-like, very thin. Okay. Um, so it has a really nice um, soft texture, but still provides that beautiful purple flower. Yeah, that's nice. Great. And then, you know, we've been talking about perennials, uh, but we have a lot of other native species, especially woody plants, that oh, are great okay. pollinating plants. They typically bloom earlier in the year. But, uh, we have some great ones like the sumacs. Okay. Uh, there's several different species of sumacs, and they're great uh, resources for a lot of uh, wildlife. Um, and then one of my favorites is the button bush, Cephalanthus species. Those okay. are so cool. I just yeah. love them. And they're the ones that grows by water, correct? It does. Okay. It grows a lot. Typically found growing along the stream banks and in ponds and lakes. So they do like the moist growing conditions. Okay. But they actually do really well in a normal landscape situation. So we've seen a lot of great plants here at the, the Botanic Gardens of OSU. And the department has our Landscaping for Wildlife book that, that kind of shares some of these tips. But do you have any other resources that you could share with us? There's a lot of great resources that are available, um, lots of stuff online. Uh, one uh, source in eastern Oklahoma is the Kerr Center. Oh, sure. And they actually have a wonderful publication uh, that's available online about pollinators. Uh, there's the Xerces Society, of course. Um, and then um, a number of other uh, fact sheets and, and other resources that you can get online. And then when it comes to buying plants, and that's the big question, that's, that's what everybody wants question. to know, where do I buy all these plants you've been talking about? The well-established or the larger nurseries will often carry some of our natives. And then we have some really good um, nurseries here in the state, uh, Bustani Plant Farm here in Stillwater. Okay. Um, the uh, Wild Things uh, Nursery, they actually sell, I think mostly to, um, at uh, farmers markets and okay. places like All that, right. you know, events. They don't actually sell out of their uh, store, okay. I don't believe. Um, and then there's Sunshine Nursery out in Western Oklahoma. Those are just a few of the native plant sources that we have and, and great plants people that work at those uh, places. Well, great, well, we really appreciate you sharing your knowledge of, of Oklahoma's plants with us. You're it's, it's been really helpful, thank you. Uh-huh, you're welcome. Of course, some pollinators might not be too desirable around your house. <laughs> See what I did there? So keep this in mind. Bees tend to prefer flowers that they can walk on to sip nectar. But butterflies need a big flat place to land on the flowers they visit. So they prefer flat-faced, broad flowers. Probably the poster child of butterflies would have to be the monarch. Their annual migration from North America to Central America is one of the great wonders of the animal kingdom. And from recent news reports, you've probably heard that they're in decline, which has scientists concerned. But we here in Oklahoma are perfectly poised to have a direct impact on the future of the monarch. As we've talked about earlier, what's good for butterflies is good for all of us. So we hope that you'll take advantage of the resources that we've shared with you today and do your part. 
Thanks for joining us today. And for all of us at your wildlife department, I'm Todd Craighead, and we'll see you right back here next time on Outdoor Oklahoma.